Hello, first graders. This is week four, day five, independent work. This lesson is only the independent work for day five. I knew our independent work would take a little while, so I put it in a separate video. For today's independent work, you will need your thinking cap, your listening ears, a pencil, your crayons, and your modules three and four EL workbook. If you don't have your materials ready, just press pause, then press play when you're ready to learn. Okay friends, let's get started. Our learning target for our independent work says, I can explain the purpose of a feather using pictures and words. Let's read that again. I can explain the purpose of a feather using pictures and words. Well, what kind of feather will we be explaining? Today, we will be explaining the semi-plume feather. We'll be looking at it, learning about it, and then explaining it using pictures and words. First, I'm going to invite you to just look at the feathers, making close observations about what you see. Think about how would you describe these feathers to someone that had never seen one before. Tell me, what are some adjectives or describing words that you would use to describe the semi-plume feathers? Mm-hmm. Good. I can add on the words soft, light, fluffy, and wispy. We are going to reread our text, Feathers, not just for flying. And as you listen and read along with the text, I want you to be on the hunt for semi-plume feathers. After our text, we'll go back and reread one little part that focuses on this type of feather. Feathers, not just for flying by Melissa Stewart, illustrated by Sarah S. Brannon. Birds and feathers go together, like trees and leaves, like stars and the sky. All birds have feathers, but no other animals do. Most birds have thousands of feathers, but those feathers aren't all the same. That's because feathers have so many different jobs to do. Peacock, swan, red-tailed hawk, blue jay, American bittern, anhinga, cardinal, wood duck, rosy-faced lovebird, dark-eyed jungo. Feathers can warm like a blanket. On cold, damp days, a blue jay stays warm by fluffing up its feathers and trapping a layer of warm air next to its skin. Blue jay, Bradbury Mountain, Maine. Or cushion like a pillow. Wood Duck, Lake Bemidji, Minnesota. A female wood duck lines her nest with feathers she plucks from her own body. These feathers cushion the duck's eggs and keep them warm.
feathers can shade out sun like an umbrella. As a hungry tricolored heron wades through the water in search of food, it raises its wings high over its head. The feathers block out reflections from the sky and shade the water. This makes it easier to spot tasty fish and frogs. Tricolored Heron, Florida Everglades. Or protect skin like sunscreen. Red-tailed hawk, Shiprock, New Mexico. On sunny summer afternoons, red-tailed hawks spend hours soaring through the sky in search of prey. Their thick feathers protect their delicate skin from the sun's harmful rays. Feathers can soak up water like a sponge. On sizzling summer days, a male sand grouse cools off by soaking his belly feathers in a watering hole. Then the proud papa flies to his nest. While dad guards his chicks, the little ones suck on his feathers to quench their thirst. Palace's Sand Grouse, Gobi Desert, Mongolia. Or clean up messes like a scrub brush. An American bittern always cleans up after it eats. Its feathers have brittle tips that crumble into a dusty powder. The powder is perfect for scouring away the dirt and slimy fish oil that sticks to its feathers. American bittern, Tualatin River, Oregon. Feathers can distract attackers like a bullfighter's cape. A dark-eyed junco distracts its enemies by flashing the bright white feathers on the outside of its tail. Then it quickly covers the feathers and darts off in the other direction. Dark-eyed junco, Lincoln, Massachusetts or hide a bird from predators like camouflage clothing. A female cardinal's dull, grayish tan body and feathers blend in with her forest home. They help her hide and protect her nest from enemies while she sits on her eggs. Northern Cardinal, Columbus, Ohio. Feathers can make high-pitched sounds like a whistle. When a male club-winged mannequin wants to get a female's attention, he leans forward, raises his wings over his back, and rapidly shakes them. As feathers with ridges rub against feathers with stiff, curved tips, a squeaky chirping sound trills through the air. Club-winged mannequin, Milpe Bird Sanctuary, Ecuador, South America. Or attract attention like fancy jewelry. Peacock, Busa Hill Forest, New Delhi, India. A peacock's bright, beautiful tail feathers make him easy to spot. At mating time, a female is attracted to the male with the biggest, most colorful fan of feathers. Feathers can dig holes like a backhoe. After bank swallows mate, they make a home together. First, the male uses his bill and the tough feathers on his lower legs to dig a two-foot-long tunnel in a stream bank. He pushes the dirt out with his wings. Then the female builds a nest of straw, grasses, and leaves at the end of the tunnel. Bank Swallow, Bear River, Utah. Or carry building supplies like a forklift. Rosy-faced lovebird, 
Huab River, Namibia, Africa. Most birds carry nesting materials in their beaks, but not the female rosy-faced lovebird. When she finds grass, leaves, or strips of bark, she tucks them under her rump feathers and flies back to her nest. Feathers can help birds float like a life jacket. Mute swans glide smoothly across the water's surface. Pockets of air trapped between their feathers help these graceful birds stay afloat. Mute Swan, Chesapeake Bay, Maryland. Or plunge downward like a fishing sinker. Most birds make a special oil to waterproof their feathers, but not the anhinga. The weight of its wet feathers helps the hungry hunter dive deep down in search of fish, crayfish, and shrimp. Anhinga, Lake Martin, Louisiana. Feathers can glide like a sled. Emperor penguins have tightly packed belly feathers that form firm, slick surfaces. The feathers make it easy for these birds to slide across ice and snow. Emperor penguin, a daily land, Antarctica. Or sprint across the snow like snowshoes. Each autumn, Willow ptarmigans grow a thick layer of feathers on top of their toes. Like snowshoes, the feathers increase the size of the bird's feet so they can shuffle across the snow instead of sinking in. Willow ptarmigan, Denali National Park, Alaska. But most of all, feathers can give birds the lift they need to race across the sky. Kinds of feathers. Many scientists study birds, and they are learning new information every day. Right now, not all scientists agree about the best way to classify types of feathers. Here is one system that many scientists use. Tiny filiplume feathers are attached to nerves. They help a bird sense its surroundings, and they let the bird know that its feathers are in place. Stiff bristle feathers around a bird's eyes act like eyelashes. Some birds use bristle feathers around their mouths to locate food. Soft, fluffy down feathers keep a bird warm by trapping body heat next to its skin. Semiplume feathers work with down feathers to keep birds warm and dry. Contour feathers cover most of a bird's body. They give a bird its shape and colors. The flight feathers on a bird's wings lift it up and move it forward. Flight feathers on the tail help a bird steer and keep its balance. Now that we have read our text, Feathers Not Just for Flying, I want us to focus in on this page. This was in the back of our text, and this is really just one little part of the page. Semi-plume feathers work with down feathers to keep birds warm and dry. Read that with me. Semi-plume feathers work with down feathers to keep birds warm and dry. Now that we have observed feathers, we've reread our text and hunted for the semi-plume feather, and We've looked at the definition of what a semi-plume feather does. It keeps birds warm and dry. Let's get ready for our independent work where we will write about the semi-plume feather. 
go to page 16 inside of your EL workbook. You'll know you're there when it looks like this. If you need more time finding page 16, just press pause, then press play once you've found it. Okay, researchers, hopefully you're on page 16. At the top, it says Burr's Research Notebook, part two, page two. Follow the directions to complete a drawing and sentence about semi-plume feathers. At the top, it says steps for drawing. Step one, trace the outline. You do not have this text at home with you, but you have it on the screen. You can rewind the video and take your finger and hover over the screen, tracing the outline of the feather. Next, draw the outline in the box. Look for details and draw the details within the feather. Draw a semi-plume feather. Do you want to see the feather that I drew? There it is. Then finish the sentence. Some birds have semi-plume feathers so that they can stay warm. On page 16, draw the semi-plume feather then complete the sentence. This independent work is to show me and your teacher that you are able to closely observe a special kind of feather, look for the feather inside of a text, reread the definition of the feather, and then write down those details on your own. I'm going to take away my example because I want you to really focus on your own work. I'll read the directions one more time before saying goodbye. Follow the directions to complete a drawing and sentence about semi-plume feathers. If you've forgotten what that feather looks like, just rewind our video and find a picture of that feather. And if you're not sure about the definition to help you finish the sentence, rewind the video and try to find that definition. Thank you for joining me, researchers, on working on your semi-plume feather. I'll see you next time. Bye, friends.